Hello and welcome to today's lesson on charging and discharging capacitors, which is found in the capacitor topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look to try to understand the mechanism behind capacitors charging and discharging. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to understand why capacitor charges and discharges in electrical circuits, describe and explain the relationship between the potential difference and time in a charging capacitor, and describe and explain the relationship relationship between the potential difference in time and a discharging capacitor. So, a capacitor will charge when it is connected to a positive and negative terminal in a complete circuit. So the positive and negative terminals are provided by the battery or power pack in the circuit. Now it's important to note that um, when the capacitor is connected to a direct current source, charge builds up on its plates. So a positive plate forms where electrons are removed from the plate. The attraction from the positive terminal causes the electrons to leave the plate. So the presence of an EMF source causes the charge imbalance on the capacitor to plates, whilst a negative plate forms where the electrons are added to the plate, so the repulsion from the negative terminal causes the electrons to move onto the plate. So once again the presence of an EMF source causes the charge imbalance on the capacitor plates. Now, it's important to note that the negative plate becomes negatively charged as the negative terminal of the power supply okay, will push those electrons onto that negative plate. So the, this occurs because the negative terminal repels those negative electrons onto the plate because the same charges repel each other. Now this effect will occur quickly at first as there's no charge on the plate, so the electrons will freely move onto the plate. However, over time, the negative charge builds up on the plate. So this makes it more difficult to place more charge on the plate as the electrons repel the addition of more electrons onto the plate due to light charge repulsion. So what this means is that the rate of charging slows down with respect to time. And it's the same idea with the positive terminal. Because what is happening is that... Um, the electrons on that positive plate will be repelled by the negative plate and be attracted to the positive terminal. This will make those electrons leave that plate and go towards the positive terminal. Now, that, that attraction will make that movement to make that plate on the upper part of the capacitor lose electrons. Now, this effect happens quickly at first as there are many electrons on the upper plate and they're attracted to that positive terminal, but over time, the positive charge builds up on the plate and the negative charge builds up near the positive terminal so this makes it more difficult to remove more charge off the plate as the electrons are now attracted to the positive nature of the plate and repulsed by the negative charge near the positive terminal so the rate of charging slows with respect to time so it's important to note that when the capacitor is connected to a direct current source the charge builds up on the plate and the direction of electron movement is towards the positive terminal so the electrons will leave the negative terminal and go onto the negative plate and they'll leave the positive term they'll leave the positive plate and head towards the positive terminal so this will cause a potential difference to be formed between the plates and we can measure the rate of charging by measuring this potential difference across the capacitor because over time as the as the more electrons uh, join the negative charge plate and the more electrons that leave the positively charged plate the greater the potential difference across the capacitor but what happens when the capacitor discharges well when the capacitor is connected to a direct current source the charge builds up on its plate causing those potential difference to form between the plates so this means that there are fewer electrons on the positive plate and more electrons on the negative plate now these electrons are held in place whether they are off the positively charged plate or on the negatively charged plate by the positive and negative terminals of the power supply. So the positive terminal is attracting electrons off the positively charged plate whilst the negative terminal is repelling electrons onto the negatively charged plate. So if we wish to discharge a capacitor we must remove the terminals because it's the terminals that are holding the charge imbalance in place. So to start to discharge a capacitor we must turn off the EMF of the circuit. So when this happens the charge charge imbalance will no longer hold so what this means is the electrons on the negative plate will repel each other and now there's no repulsion from the negative terminal so this pushes them off the plate so the electrons stream back off the plate towards the negative terminal.
Now this occurs quickly as first as there's lots of charge on the plates, so lots of repulsion. But over time, as the charge moves off the plates, there's less repulsion, so the discharge effect lessens. So discharging slows with respect to time. Now we can also measure the rate of discharging by measuring the potential difference across the capacitor because it allows us to look at the difference between the positive and negatively charged plates. But what's happening to the positively charged plates? Well, the electrons which have been removed from the positive plate will now be attracted towards it as there's an area of positive charge on that positive plate and there's no attraction from the positive terminal to overcome this because it's been removed. So the electrons will stream back onto the positive plate. Now this effect will be quick at first as there's a large positive charge on the plate but over time as more electrons move onto the plate there's less positive charge so the effect lessens. So discharging slows with respect to time. So just to clarify as the capacitor is discharging the electrons move onto the positive plate plate and the electrons move off the negative plate. So the direction of electron movement is going to be towards the negative terminal. They are going from the positive terminal onto the positively charged plate and from the negatively charged plate towards the negative terminal. So it's important to note that this is the opposite direction to the electron movement compared to when it's charging up. Now when the capacitor is fully discharged there's no further charge on the plates so there's therefore no attraction between the two plates so the potential difference is zero. So we can measure this rate of discharge by measuring the potential difference across the capacitor. So we can look at this in terms of an investigation, where you can experimentally look at the relationship for the potential difference in time for a charging and discharging capacitor. So you would need a capacitor, a resistor, electrical wires, a power pack and a multimeter. So you connect the capacitor power pack resistor in the series circuit, place the multimeter in parallel with the capacitor, set the multimeter to 20 volts, retrieve a stopwatch, connect the circuit and turn on the power pack, record the potential difference across the capacitor every 5 seconds for 120 seconds, this would be charged in the capacitor, and remember to record the potential difference in 0 seconds. Then when this has taken place, turn off the power pack, record the potential difference across the capacitor every 5 seconds for 120 seconds, and this, this is discharged the capacitor, remember to record the potential difference in zero seconds. So to carry out this investigation you would retrieve a capacitor. The capacitance of a capacitor is always stated on the side of the capacitor. Now a capacitor is polarised as a positive and a negative pole where the positive pole has a longer leg. So the positive pole must be connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. If this is not the case, the dielectric material in between the plates will break down and the capacitor will not work because charge will move across the dielectric. Now, you connect the capacitor into a component holder, making sure you know which leg is the positive one. The component holder allows you to connect the capacitor to the circuit more easily. The resistance of a resistor can be then it can be determined from the band on the side and I've wrote this down on the stick which the resistor is attached to. So you'd retrieve a resistor or an appropriate resistance. So in today's investigation let's say we'll use a 10 kilo ohm resistor. You'd also retrieve a multimeter. Now the multimeter will be used as a voltmeter in this investigation so we can easily use a voltmeter instead but just this instance I'm using a multimeter. Then two electrical wires are connected to the upper holes of the multimeter. You would set the multimeter to 20 volts which means the maximum value the multimeter can measure is 20 volts. You then retrieve a power pack and set the power pack to 8 volts. Don't set that to a higher value as it can break the capacitor because if too much charge is forced onto the plates then the, the charge can leak across the plates as the dielectric breaks down. You will place the resistor and capacitor in a series circuit. The resistor is present in the circuit to ensure the capacitor discharges and charges at a measurable rate. The higher the capacitor, the slower the capacitor charges and discharges. Now you'll place a multimeter in parallel with the capacitor. The multimeter is measuring the potential difference between the plates of the capacitor, as shown here. You then retrieve a stopwatch to measure the time. You turn on the power pack and record the potential difference as the capacitor charges every 5 seconds for 120 seconds. One person ideally should be monitoring the time and the other person must be reading the multimeter and recording the results. This will reduce the absolute uncertainty in the investigation. And remember, this is measuring the potential difference across the capacitor 
when the capacitor is charging. When you've completed that, you would turn off the power pack and record the potential difference as the capacitor discharges every 5 seconds for 120 seconds. This measures the potential difference when the capacitor is discharging. Now once again, one person must be monitoring the time and the other person must be reading the multimeter and recording the results, as this would reduce the absolute uncertainty in the measurement. And remember, this is measuring the potential difference when the capacitor is discharging because the multimeter is reading the potential difference across the capacitor. Now just to note, when, the dis when, the, when you are discharging the capacitor, the capacitor must still be part of a complete circuit. If the capacitor discharges into the earth, then the physics of discharge changes. So what have we learned in today's lesson? We've looked at the idea of charging and discharging capacitors through resistors. Now, if we have been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can explain why a capacitor charges and discharges in electrical circuits. Describe, we can describe and explain the relationship between the potential difference in time in a charging capacitor. And finally, we can describe and explain the relationship between potential difference in time in a discharging capacitor. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at charging and discharging capacitors, which is found on the capacitance topic of AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening to this lesson and have a nice day.